Good morning, everybody. Rev Rick here with Broadman Baptist Church, and this is the Broadman Word for October 12th, 2020. And I'm bringing you a message today about prayer, and this is taken from the devotional New Morning Mercies by Paul Tripp. You know, prayer is not always what we think it is. It is abandoning um, a life of demand and even complaint and recognizing that undeserved blessings and giving yourself totally to thankfulness is really the way that we need to go. You know, when you think of prayer, um, it really is a conversation with God and it is casting our cares upon God. But what is it that you think of when you think of prayer? Is Are you thinking about what you want from God? And is that what is driving your prayer life? Or is it really um, a seeking of God's will and wanting to match up your will with his in the situation? You know, uh, true prayer happens when our surrendering to him and our celebration of him come together. It is a, a whole lot more than just a wish list of things that we throw up to God. And when you do that, when you use it as sort of a wish list, it puts you in the center of the prayer and it reduces God um, down to a level of essentially uh, a servant to you, uh, you know, responding to your demands and needs. It's not really Him in his grace that your heart is craving, you're trying to use God as a means to an end that you've devised, forgetting that he knows infinitely more about what you need than what you do. And he knows infinitely more about what's right and what will fulfill his purposes in the situation than you do. So instead of saying, this is what I'd like to happen, God, and I'd appreciate it if you would use your divine might to make it happen. Um, we should not do that. We forget that God is creator and savior in those types of prayer situations. So prayer then shouldn't really be about your wants and your feelings. It should be when you surrender a claim on your life fully and put it before God and ask him for what is right. Ask him to enact his greater and his wiser plans for you and in hopes that his will will match up with yours. Then that is true surrendering. Celebration is when uh, we sort of take into consideration all that God is and that he is still willing to listen to us and that he is our heavenly father, that he wants to be there as our provider, our protector, um, our peacemaker, and Jesus Christ as an intercessor um, to God on our behalf. So when we do that, we choose to celebrate his kingdom and we choose to celebrate that he has decided to give us his kingdom and the forgiving, rescuing, transforming redemption that we received should be on full display in our prayer lives. It is a thing for us to celebrate and we should also celebrate the glorious future that we've been guaranteed because no matter what the answer to your individual prayer might be, it is part of a series of promises that God has given to always care for you and take care of you. Uh, it might not look like it from a worldly perspective. It might be difficult for you to understand at times, but what is happening is in fact for the fulfillment of God's good purposes and specifically his purposes in your life. You're never alone. 
um, we can, when we take this approach to prayer, find peace in grace and righteousness and strength through the divine nature of God. When we meditate on God's glory and how we can, uh, in our prayer life, come to know him and to enact his will through matching our will with his, then we can celebrate his goodness and his glory. We can rejoice in the fact that we don't have to look for purpose in people and situations. Um, we don't have to worry about locations or um, we don't have to uh, think in temporal terms. Uh, we've been given an eternal life and our prayers should reflect um, not any right now concerns. Um, however, there is nothing that prevents us from the old 911 prayer, right? Um, I'm worried, I'm scared, this has happened or happening, and I, I'm coming to my Father for peace and solace, perspective, and asking for his intervention. Nothing wrong with doing that. That's, that's a perfect um, time to pray. Uh, also, in our regular prayer life, there is nothing wrong with bringing petitions before God. He says in his Bible to us to cast his cares cast our cares upon him. So keeping an eternal perspective, keeping our prayers um, God-focused and not as some sort of checklist or wish list, and encouraging um, the expression of a Christian life uh, through you as a result of your relationship with God requires uh, a very active prayer life. We don't want our prayers to become selfish or, or self-centered. Uh, we don't want it to ever become some sort of a list of demands, particularly if they are bitter or jaded demands. And we don't want to uh, have our prayers become some sort of a uh, partnership where we are employing God uh, to do our will. And we want it always to be a cel celebration of him, his glory, his kingdom, and a surrendering, surrendering of our life uh, to him. That kind of prayer is a tool of God's grace in your life, and you can um, have peace and blessings and fulfillment through your prayer and uh, coming closer to God in your intimate prayer time. But as always, Satan is there trying to infiltrate your prayers with uh, inappropriate requests, selfish demands, uh, complaints, uh, criticisms, and these things are not fruitful. They don't produce anything good in you or for you. If you want to have a little bit further study on this, Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 through 15 would be a great place to look. I'll talk to you again a little bit later this week. For now, pray. Pray, 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 but have a good, fervent, glorious, God-centered prayer life and not a worldly one. Take care.